Are you ready for the ultimate bikepacking weekend adventure? Join us for an unforgettable self-supported bikepacking trip through Southwest Virginia. The Grayson Gravel Pie Bikepacking Adventure travels along the Virginia Creeper Trail, the beautiful gravel roads of Grayson County, Virginia, and the New River Trail. All lodging and camping arrangements are included, along with daily routes and guides riding along with you. This self-supported adventure offers resupply opportunities every 20 miles for your food and water needs. Find out more at GravelTravelDirt.com. What are you going to talk about tonight? Stuff. Let's talk about things. People. Let's talk about bike things. People. No, I don't talk about people. Nope. Not talking about people. But I do like that we're both wearing our cat ears. It's fantastic. Yes. It's fantastic. I'm, I'm excited for that photo. You're listening to Mid-Atlantic Gravel, Travel, and Dirt. All right, I'm Joey. I'm Brian, everybody. This is episode 220 of Mid-Atlantic Gravel, Travel, in Dirt. See what I said there? said gravel travel in dirt in dirt we are 200 <laughs> episodes away from 420 what's so significant about episode 420 joey uh, it, means, it means we've been together for a while <laughs> if you're new here folks this is the podcast where we talk about gravel bikes adventure biking bike packing bike camping or just playing bikes we're wearing cat ears we are wearing our cat ears this evening as you can see if you if you are in, if you're consuming this and you haven't seen the cover photo then you have to look at the cover photo i ought to put it on instagram too what do you think I'm gonna do that because they're fantastic. Ew! You just you just ate part of a dog toy. <laughs> it was just peanut butter. <laughs> so Blake gets peanut I'll butter. Cover the trash panda for nothing. <laughs> Blake gets peanut butter all over a dog toy, and uh, to keep him quiet, and Joey just licked his fingers after giving dog. Uh, so that that's I think that's funny. Anyway, before we get to the oh, I didn't say what we're gonna talk about. We're gonna talk about stuff. Some maintenance. Things you should know, things you would be cool to know, things that you want to leave to the pros. Um, I think everyone should learn how to change a spare tire on their car. Should be a life lesson. Oh my goodness, yeah. And your oil. I think I've talked about that before. I had to change up on Blue Ridge Parkway. I had to on a bike tour. I had to uh, change a tire. And this this young lady. You guys think we're talking about bike maintenance? <laughs> no, we're talking about cars. This lady, young lady, was trying to change her tire on her car while her boyfriend. Or fiance, significant other in some way, shape, or form, stood over her shoulder and watched, not saying a thing. I didn't even try to mansplain. Didn't do. Didn't do anything. So I went over and I, I, I did. I used that opportunity as an educational opportunity. It's a fine line between mansplaining and actually using something like that as an educational opportunity. Yeah. I, I, I walked her through how to do it. So I, I, I hopefully helped instill that life skill into somebody else. I tried to teach Jess. I dri- I've driven two and a half hours one way mm-hmm. to change her flat tire. Well, it's a hard thing to do, and it's very nerve-wracking. Because oh, you're on the no side one of the teaching road. her growing up. Yeah, you're on the side of the road, too. But, but the uh, the typical, you know, high school class everyone jokes about, like, you should, there sh- there should be in that, you know, how to oh, do right? your taxes and... Yeah, yeah all of that like, stuff. Like, life lesson how to, you should how have to, for your senior year of high school. How to address an envelope. <laughs> <laughs> how to write a check. <laughs> Nothing. Any of those things. Dang use nowadays. Uh, that's we, we should start a new podcast on necessary life skills. Oh, yeah. Actually, that would actually be pretty good. That would be... I like that. That would be really sharp. How to put your toilet paper on the roll. <laughs> yeah, because you fold it, you roll it over the front. If you roll it over the back, yeah, it's just it's uh, yeah ah uh, ah uh, all this stuff kind of drives me crazy. That's a good this or that, but if you do over the back, you're wrong. Oh yeah, I mean it, <laughs> it's it, not even this or that. I understand that the the mullet concept you want the bathroom party, but the paper should roll off the front. It should. Yeah, it's not it's not a business in the front party in the back kind yeah. of thing, unless it's a special kind of bathroom. Then. <laughs> Uh, uh, we might the, actually talk about bikes. Let's do the discount codes first. On either the Salt Stick website or the JoJ website, when you reach out, check out, use the code Love You Buys. It takes 20% off all your items. And I want to give Salt Stick a special shout out. Um, we heard from Larry. Remember, we talked about Larry doing assault on Mount Mitchell. And he credits. Salt Stick on Mount Mitchell. That's right. He, he credits his finish to Salt Stick to get him through the cramps. No that offense. A, no offense to Salt Stick. That was just Larry. 
Well, that was just Larry being yeah, Larry. Yeah, but you know, you know, he said, I, you know, every time I felt like I was starting to cramp, I grabbed me some salt stick, kept it right there in the front pocket, and the salt stick grabbed Larry. <laughs> Over at Cutaway USA, use the discount code GTD twenty to take twenty percent off your order. If you're in the market for a new hydration pack, check out Orange Mud. I'll put the discount code over in the show notes because it's long and confusing, uh, but it'll get you 15% off your order. And not just on a hydration pack. They do a lot of other stuff there, too. So all those links and all those codes will be in the show notes. Now, I, pre- I pre-cracked. I'm sorry. I actually am drinking something tonight that warranted a crack, and I pre-cracked. Pre- cra- pre-cracked. Pre-cracked. I am having, I'm being responsible, athletic brewing, run well, wild. Well, you don't have, like, it's, yeah, that is a common uh, misconception, what being do you mean? responsible with alcohol. Being responsible with alcohol? Yeah. I, I don't know. You could have a Bud, you could have yeah, a Miller, could, you could have a PBR. I could have a Bud Light, I could have a Miller Light. You I could have, have a, yeah, you know, as long as you give yourself anything enough fancy? time. Anything fancy? Yeah. But I, I do enjoy this, because it, it's it's actually... A kind of tasty IPA. We've talked about the fact that I don't I like really it. It's my last drink one. IPAs. This is the uh, Athletic Brewing Run Wild IPA. Beautiful can, bright blue with some yellow. Um, very nice. If you haven't tried Athletic Brewing, yeah. um, run out to your local grocery store. <laughs> <laughs> you can <laughs> buy it at Weiss <laughs> anywhere. Um, I don't. I'm going to bet you that not all grocery stores carry this because it could be a little confusing. Maybe, maybe. I do know our Weiss uh, carries. And there's only specific ones they carry at the grocery store, like the there's a golden, there's the IPA, and then there's like a hazy. Mm-hmm. That's what I've seen around. Is the same ones you got to order this specific one. You know what's yeah. funny? We're sitting here talking to each other, wearing our cat ears. I'm totally, yeah. I'm totally just taking you totally serious. There's no like I'm not looking at your cat ears going. You know, well, well, Jess was taking a picture. I did take a couple swigs of the, uh, <laughs> the Eagles Rare from Travis. I still have some of that. So we had probably one of the best, most fun rides I've done in a long time. Yeah. On it was Monday great. for Memorial Day. It was rainy. It was yep. a little gross. Um, I made it even grosser by adding sealant. Everywhere. Um, at least every five or eight miles on our 45-mile ride, I, I threw sealant. Yeah. You're the only one, too. At somebody. And... Not even from the same hole over and over again. <laughs> I was throwing sealant from all the... I should say, Jesus. <laughs> I was throwing sealant from multiple punctures on my tires. Yes, everywhere. And it was the front tire, too, which is so weird. It was the yeah, front tire. Yeah, it was front on both. Yeah. One was like a hole that the first time it, it, it spit, we, we stopped, got the sealant to the bottom. It sealed itself up. But then it was later on, that same hole. Started throwing sealant, so we had to plug it. I need to restock my Dyna plugs, and then yeah, you used the whole bag. <laughs> you used three Dyna plugs on one ride because the other one was a cut. It was probably about I don't want to call it a quarter of an inch, but it was at least an eighth of an inch. Um, and it took two Dyna plugs to fill that. You saw it. You saw yeah. it. Yeah, uh, craziness. But what a fun ride with. All your shop employees, not all your shop employees, a a fair number of your shop employees. Ethan and Noah, that was their first real road ride. Okay. They did great, Um, by the way. Jim, and Jim rides a, Jim rides a good amount, but Jim rides in flat pedals and high top Chuck Taylors. Yeah, I had to uh, respect that. His uh, fat, no, last Slim Chance is the road bike Slim Chance with rival. It's pretty sweet steel road bike. Um, Every once in a while, you'd be riding in front of him or behind him, and you'd hear the the um, the rubber on the Chuck Taylor oh, yeah. hit the frame and go eek, <laughs> squeak a little bit. <laughs> I thought that was fun. Jim's a G. Uh, uh, so that it was. It was like, how did you decide which brother got the single speed <laughs> and which one got the actual geared bike? Well, I texted everyone about a week ahead of time for that ride, and I didn't hear anything from Ethan about the ride, so. It was Sunday, like later Sunday, like I don't know, seven or eight, that Ethan said. Uh, so Ethan has an older Trek that we rebuilt, but it still has tubulars on it. Ooh, and he didn't really want to ride the tubulars. Mm, no, so, I don't blame him. Um, he asked me about borrowing a bike, and then mentioned Noah was going to go. And I know Noah wants to do single speed. And Noah's about to switch his fuse over to single speed, so. I mentally defaulted to giving Noah the single speed. Okay. 
Because he mentioned sense. Noah yeah. riding the single Dave's old single speed we have in the shop, a road mm-hmm. version. So I just figured it'd be good for him to try it out. Someone with the poker stuff all over it. Yeah. 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 That's kind um, of a cool bike. So I defaulted to that. Okay. So <laughs> there was I, method to the mad. Yeah, I did ask yeah. Ethan. Um I said, Hey, do you want to ride the synapse or the rodeo? Um and he said he didn't care and then a couple texts later he's like, I actually have been wanting to, you know, see what the rodeo was all about. Yeah, smart he loved move. it. Smart move. Uh, but then I switched on Dow right at the uh, stop sign back there by the ruddy on the way home. And I was like, hey, you should, like, we should have done this earlier, but you should take the synapse down. Oh. And we, we start riding, and Ethan just flies by me. Because <laughs> I was like, hey, you should try to take the KOM. I don't know. He's like, I hit 33 at one point in time, and I, I was going so fast. And That's pretty cool, though. Yeah. What a neat way to see the difference between the, those oh, yeah. two bikes. That's the way to do it. We should do more bike swap rides. Bike swap rides. Yeah, everyone's got to ride. So a, much fun. Well, me, Ethan, Noah, and Jess all have, you know, like XT SPD pedals. So that was easy. So also last Thursday was the Jubilee ride down because we oh, yeah. we haven't we haven't we you know we've had a, a couple of big things happening in the Jubilee ride, which um, if you don't know Jubilee Farm and Fermentation correct is down in Lexington Park. In St. Mary's County. Uh, Leonardtown. Leonardtown. It's Leonardtown. a Leonardtown, I, Maryland. I always get the town name. Don't mix up the park. I, I always get the names wrong. Leonardtown. So it's in Leonardtown. Um, and Dan is not the owner, but he's like our primary contact. I think he kind of runs the place, right? He's the brewmaster. What he's do you the brewmaster? It? Yeah. Okay, I didn't actually know what his role was. But they have done this really cool thing down there where they've cut trails in through the field, through the cornfields, around the along the river um through around the pond back in the woods and it's only what like two miles two and a half miles something like that it was like 2.65 total yeah okay um so it's just a really cool thing they're doing on thursday nights you can come down there you can hike it you can walk it you can run it you can ride a bike on it there's a difference between hiking and walking didn't we do this a few episodes ago no i don't think we did did we oh Uh uh-oh i think i was joking a hike and a walk i think it's all about your attitude (laughs) And maybe your footwear. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. You can you can leisurely consume the trail by foot yes. at your own pace, either by running, walking, or hiking. I mean. um, hiking maybe involves sticks. You would have to use a stick, and then it would be hiking. Oh, yeah, you get your sticks. There we go. That'll be our differentiator. Or a mountain bike, or like I did a gravel bike. And uh, then once you're done... You sit around outside at the little tables, and they have really nice, light, refreshing beers. Just feels like I'm making a commercial for Jubilee. Ju ju Jubilee, it's the farm where you want to be. <laughs> Chat GPT didn't even write that song, Joey. It didn't. No, I just made that up on the spot. Sorry, I'm, start, no. I'm, I'm making a Jubilee segment while we're it, talking before I forget. It is kind of. It, it was a lot of fun. Um, you know, yeah, it's not really a, like a, a ride, but it's kind of like the ride, like what you should be, right? Because it was just a yeah. bunch of people kind of hanging out. There was a bunch of people going different, different, different paces. Um, there were bikes. kids, different bikes, kids on mountain bikes, dogs. You know, just super cool, super fun way to spend a Thursday evening with a bunch of your bike friends. Yes, yeah, the weather was perfect. It was gorgeous. Um, the gorgeous. last few Jubilee. So every Thursday, did you say that at, from four to eight is happy hour? Happy hour. Um, and their trail's going to be open. Every, Actually, every Thursday now. Every Thursday. Um, so feel free to go down. The opening one was a beautiful night. I think the other nights was even better. Mm. Actually, would have been nice with a little fire. Tell me, um, is it something that you're going to do from a shop perspective? Like, have so an event there once We're still going to make the last one every month. Okay. Um, like a pack one. Yeah. Like like the pack, like bike, everybody. Like, you're going to promote it as a, not crossover kind of a thing, yeah. but, a, but a takeover. How about we call it that? You could call it a pack takeover. That I like. You could take over his social channels for a day. Mm. You ought to talk to Dan about that. That would be kind of cool. That would actually be really cool. Do a, do a pack takeover of Jubilee on Thursdays. You don't have to do it like, what, two, three, four more times this year? It's just like in, se- quote, yeah. unquote, in season kind of thing. That'd be fun. That'd be fun. Oh, my ears falling off? No. I felt like they were falling off. I don't want my ears to fall off. Um, so, yeah, that was a lot of fun. Um, definitely, uh, we made the, um, strategic mistake of not bringing like a post-ride Sammy 
like oh, yeah. bringing a sandwich or something. We, you were not, me and Jess did. You and Jess did, and we brought. We a did not. Jersey Mike. Um. So that will be um what we will do. I, by the next time, by the time next month opens, by the time next month rolls around, which will be June, um. The the Wawa on Dow Road will be open by then, yeah. right? Hope not. <laughs> they build them fast, man. Yeah. You watch out. You watch out. That thing will pop the Dairy Queen in Leonardtown is getting close already, and they just knocked down the old car wash. So that would be. I love a Dairy Queen. Oh yeah, I love me a Dairy. We do a Dairy you Queen should, ride. Someone should do a mobile ice cream truck, like a food truck, but for ice cream. Oh, like an ice cream truck? Yeah, that's brilliant. That'd be perfect. Oh, Nobody's ever there. done that. Yeah, like a mobile Something. Dairy Queen. They could ring bells. And you could play music. Song. Like you could drive around my neighborhood and park in. Uh huh. HOA might kick you out, but. Um, oh, man. Brilliant business I, idea. I might go on Shark Tank with that one. Br- Sharks. <laughs> I have an idea for you. Mr. Cuban. <laughs> <laughs> Those morons, they probably would have never heard of one either. Uh, who knows? So, two great rides. Um, Monday was just a lot of fun. It was. It was you know, Jess was with us. and Fun. It was a little nasty out. Like. We weren't wet, but there was a little. The roads were had a little spray. It was gray. I love a gray, yeah, cool I know. day. You do. You do like the rainy God, kind. I of love it. Gray from a photography standpoint. You do, in general, I like the gloomy days. You just do good black and white too, and that lends itself well for good yeah. black and white. Um, Could be your your forte. I did get a black and white. I did get a film camera. Uh huh. And a bunch of rolls of black and white. Really? Yeah. Nice. I have a film camera. This one's called the Holga One Twenty. It's almost, it's like a plasticky, uh-huh. they, it kind of has its own, its own look to the images from it. Got like a little cult following kind of thing? Yeah, and look at that cat. I hate, they almost ran that cat over coming in here tonight. Yeah, I don't yeah, hate cats. Yeah, My no, neighbor does cat. not take care of her cats, but um, she probably saw our ears. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's, um, I'm going to take that some places. <laughs> okay. It's like a straight black and white film. I'm not going to process them in the house like I used to, but I'll send it out. Send it out. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm excited. You used to process your own film too and everything. Doing the bathroom. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, cool. I would be in there doing so my business and uh, no, it's <laughs> two for one special. <laughs> it's a little special yeah. flavor. For twenty bucks, I'll uh, <laughs> I'll process your negative. What'd you do with the spare time when you were done? While the <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that it was a lot of fun. Now I did when I got home from that ride because my bike was a- nasty. Disaster! Look like someone took spray paint to it. I I cleaned it all up, Joe. You'd be so proud of me. You'd be so proud of me. I didn't even walk in the house. Mm. I just put the bike straight out to the to the stand, put the hose on it, and zoom, and got it all cleaned up. We're gonna talk about how I cleaned it up because I've got something new that I tried that I think worked pretty well. We'll talk about that a little bit later when we talk about maintenance. You hired someone to clean it? <laughs> no, wouldn't that, that would have been nice? Some neighborhood kids, yeah, street youths. <laughs> no, then they know how, where I kept my bike, so I'm not doing that. Um, yeah, that was a lot of fun. So, but that we just bouncing around here a little bit, but that Thursday, I wanted to bring my mountain bike and blew up and I got it out. I'd already cleaned it up once. So it was, it was mostly clean. I just needed to refresh the sealant and put some pedals on it, which is mm-hmm. what I did. Um, and I had it all ready to go Thursday and Thursday afternoon. I'd ridden it around the house a few times just to kind of like get it like worked in. And then I went to, just before I put it on the truck, I went, I'm going to ride around the house a few more times to make sure that it refreshing the sealant actually helped make the tires I think you did that i am so glad i did that the the i have no idea how it happened the rear tire literally exploded off the rim like a bomb went off and blew off one of the spokes <laughs> totally just you're in the wrong part of white sands <laughs> could have been bad <laughs> <laughs> You're right. I'm surprised I did somebody to call a popo. Um, yeah, it was it was pretty ugly. It's sealing all all over me, all over the bike, everywhere, everywhere. There were squirrels that were the trees. I think that actually got sealed. <laughs> <laughs> um, so obviously that changed my my bike of choice. Um, but I was surprised at the failure of the spoke because that was a nipple failure, and. I'm, I still don't know whether when that bike, I, when it was set up to Bliss, it might still have been in the day of stands. Might have had some corrosion. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Because it, 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 didn't, it didn't break the spoke, per se. It like it blew the end of the nipple off. Does that make any sense? <laughs> yeah, no, I know. I, I've gone in a lot of different directions tonight. I'm going to stop talking. <laughs> I know from example. 
Mm. But I do now. That has motivated me since I have the bike all cleaned up, mostly ready to go. I do want to actually figure out how that wheel and put it all back together. And because you also don't want, I also don't want the bike sitting around with a broken sp- spoke and no wheel on it. And that's just not taking good care, even if it's just going to be stowed again, which I don't think I want to do. I actually, I was really psyched about getting on my mountain bike and hanging out with you guys at that Jubilee thing, because that would be a great opportunity to kind of like, cause it's not tech and it's not, you know, mm-hmm. kind of like my speed, so to speak. Um, well, anyway, but other than that, two great rides during the last week, two, two fantastic adventures. You want to do uh Strava club super quick? Yeah, it's going to take a little longer because we had to put the states back yep. on. Yep, cities and states are back in. We had we had people requesting it, Chris. Uh, Double Track Dave from Boiling Springs, Pennsylvania, with 175 even. Good job, Double Track Dave. Aaron Fotis from Kalamazoo, Michigan, with 139.8. I would say Fouts, like Dan Fouts. Aaron Fouts. What did I say? Uh, Fotis. Oh, yeah, I can't read it. It's Fouts. That's okay. Sorry. <laughs> I just realized that. And I got new glasses last week. Uh, Grant Clarkson from Mount Pleasant. What is Michigan? Like Michigan things. I'm Michigan telling you. Michigan with 127.8. Uh, Grant snuck in there because you need a 127.2. You know who had a 127.2 last week? You? No. Mr. Larry Paris. Oh. Shout out again. Oh, just Larry. one right up Mount Mitchell. Two weeks in a row. It's <laughs> a salty net. Um, yeah, you need a 127.2. We're at... <laughs> Did we go down eight hundred ninety seven? Yes. I'm not. I'm not indicating whether we've gone up or down anymore. No, it stands. <laughs> I'm just saying in the show notes. It just stands at yeah. uh, Strava.com forward slash clubs forward slash gravel travel dirt. I have no idea what's going on with those numbers, but we've really we've kind of like plateaued at that nine hundred window, <laughs> and no matter how much we beg and plead, it just doesn't seem to to move. It doesn't seem to budge. So maybe we should just give up. We'll just give up. Yeah, that's we'll we'll stop saying. Oh, my ears did fall off. That oh, see, that's what happens. Um, we will just stop saying what numbers are like, and then yeah. somewhere we'll magically in the future announce that we've reached. Man, we got four thousand once I we know. stopped. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Okay, so we promised to talk about maintenance slash repairs. Now, this is sort of a bike in general. If there's some things that are specific to the gravel community uh, maybe we'll point them out but i mean this this could be applied across the board to road bikes gravel bikes mountain bikes tandem tricycles try yeah, unicycles whatever whatever you got you know whatever you got that's got a wheel so joey yes what are the things that you should check over on your bike before you head out for a ride That you have the bike because i was at the wharf for a kayak demo this weekend and there was a kayak social get together, and one lady forgot her kayak. Ah, so make sure you bring the so device. I'm like, is that like going on a ride and forgetting your bike? Like, how do you just like <laughs> you're going on the bike ride? Well, I forgot my bike. It happens all the time, though. People forget helmets and yes, well, shoes. So she's had her paddle and vest, but she forgot a whole kayak. <laughs> Forgetting the I bike, do not forget to load that up. Um. Anyway, all right. So bike check. Um. Man, there's like four different ways to peel this onion. Okay. Um, say so your typical cruise, um, bike wise, you want to check your tires. I usually tell people to pull the brakes, make sure the brakes work, mm-hmm. spin the wheels. Um, that's basically it. I mean, if you want to get fancy and check your bolts and axles and seat posts and stuff like that, you can get a torque wrench. We got that stuff for later on. Oh, okay. But this is just, like- I tell people the biggest thing is check their air, make sure they're change lubed. Um, and squeeze your brakes because mm-hmm. a lot of people with quick releases and rim brakes, they take their wheel off to transport it and they get to the r- uh-huh. where they're going to ride they put the wheel in, but they don't seal up or don't fix the brake. They don't fix the brake. It's like don't. with regular rim, like V brakes. So what direction, and I, I, you see all riders do this all different ways. Should, is there a consistent direction if you're on old quick release, oh. which is the direction that you should clamp that quick release? I've seen people do it forward. I've seen people do it backward. I think as long as it's tight, mm. I think to be an, a snobbish elitist, mm. you, I would have mine. Not that I'm a, you know, mm-hmm. I'm saying that. I, I think if you have it sticking forward or what pisses me off is people put it parallel with the fork. 
and they close it, and you can't get your fingers in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah. generally, just facing back, parallel to the ground on the front, on the front, or just having it just behind the blade of the fork. Okay, is the most efficient way. A lot of people, whether you put it forward, is a controversy if it gets caught on something. Mm-hmm. If if you're going to get that close, rather get caught on something, something else is going to happen. Well, I think that might even be more important though in the world of a mountain bike. Yeah, that too. Like, yes, you know, a stick gets stick popped up, pop, pop up in there. If you yeah. have it facing back, and maybe twenty years ago, because most mountain bikes are through axles. However, there's still people that do that. Um, but yeah, putting it right in the line with the fork sucks. And then if you put it directly forward, you know that's not the best thing either. So just behind the fork or facing back works best. And then on the rear, I generally on the triangle, the frame, I get it in between the triangle. Okay. Or just under the rear chainstay. All right. So, um, so generally, for, generally facing each in other, the center of. The yeah, I mean, you could have it facing direction. directly rear in the back, but same thing. It's exposed to getting clipped on something. Yeah. So if you have it in like in between the triangle, something's got to actually get in there to get it. So uh, protect it is yeah. kind of what I'm here. That's that's good advice. That's yeah. good advice, and I think I think that's most important in the world of mountain bikes. Yeah, because that's your your best opportunity, and and quite honestly, I mean. How many? I know that new bikes are through axle, but everything that's old is new again. So when should we see quick releases coming back into? Uh, I mean, like they still sell, you know, the under thousand dollar mountain bikes with quick releases. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm just joking. Um, you still have mountain bike forks with like the the Maxel mm. from Rock Shocks is not like it's a through axle, but has a quick release arm. God, it's horrible. It that's, sucks. It's it's horrible. My Fox has a a lever. Mm-hmm. Which I like because it's toolless and it's not as shitty as the Maxel. Sorry, Rock Shocks people. Um, but yeah, there. I mean, there is those. Mm-hmm. But I think my stump jumper has that crazy stupid Maxel. Like, yeah, yeah. Because I think both of the little tabs those. have yeah have people tweaked out, and so now the other day, look, there's a giant cut on my hand from when I was messing with mountain bike Shoot. the other day. I, you know what, oh, Brian Shocks, I might, um, I might. It, I might just do people that. People either litigious. put them on too tight, or I'm kind of anti grease in a lot of places, but a little grease on the threads because you don't know like how long it's been sitting or on a through axle. Yeah, just a little bit where the threads are. Do you? Do you? I have had so many stuck from corrosion where we live. Yeah, I I actually usually put a little light coat of grease on the entire through axle. I don't like when people coat the whole thing. I mean, I don't coat it, but there's a little it attracts dirt. Okay. But I put it on the threads and the interface of the frame because okay. the concave ones on the road bikes and gravel bikes that, because you, you have this little donut thing going on and the frame uh-huh. interfaces, um, so it's nice and flush. But that is metal on metal. Okay. We're in a corrosive environment. We live on yeah. the bay. Um, and then people go too tight. And I've had so many where I've had to have a, a, a tool made. I've had to have will weld um, uh, easy out onto the axle and other stuff and then taking an wow. air gun and wow i've had to like go through a process with canyon before telling them i'm at the last point where i'm either going to get out or i'm going to break the frame and they said just take a video for evidence and if it breaks they were going to replace the frame but wow um yeah so just a little bit of grease and some a little, little on little the place. metal to metal interfaces uh, is that a place where anti-seize would yeah, it's just messy yeah okay like, you look like tin man yeah. whether you put a little tiny drop or yeah. Rub yourself down and so oh, just put a rub grease. myself down in Annie. Annie sees, yeah. <laughs> Halloween costume. Oh, um, just a little, whatever <laughs> grease you're using. Somewhat, something viscous, just so it, yeah. Yeah. Nothing like chain lube. So, what types of things should you check after a ride? So, you just finish up your ride. Make yeah. sure you have your bike. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing applies. <laughs> I don't know. I'm actually pretty bad at <laughs> after my bike. If I'm back to the parking lot and my tires are full of air and yeah, I just put on the rack. I know that sometimes it's it's easier. There, for I mean, I'm probably a worse example because there's probably people that actually check their bikes after. Um, but what, what I'm really thinking about is if I have a normal ride. No, if I've taken a spill or something. Okay, that's good. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I mean, I'll inspect the bike. You probably should always look at a mountain bike because it's. You know, you're out in a pretty rough and tumble kind of yeah. an environment. And I know that, um, like, we tell people on tour to air up their tires at night before the next day so that if you have some sort of a problem, then we can address that in the evening as opposed to scrambling in the morning. 
Do you tell them um, to fill it up before they ride too? Um, most people do. Most people oh, okay. will check it. Because you can lose like 10 or 15 PSI. Yeah, especially because the bikes live outside. Yeah, and if it's overnight. cool. Um, but what that does, it's more of a touch Yeah, if they have says, a flat. So, yeah, because they go, oh my goodness, I just realized my tire, I rode it all day at 20 PSI or whatever. And that's why I was going so slow and blah, 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 whatever. It wasn't but your tire there, they Charles. Can, they can identify things in the evening when mechanics have more time to deal with them as opposed to the mornings when, like yeah. I said, you're kind of scrambling, scrambling, trying to get um, your camp, you know, sat, you know, broke down and everything put in a, in a van, everything. What about... Um, yeah, I'm pretty bad at checking post ride. Okay, well, I think everybody probably is, um, um, but pre ride is the important one. Yeah, and and I, actually, it was so much easier with all that sealant sealant over the bike, mm-hmm. um, sealant all over the bike. It was everywhere. It was everywhere. But doing that while the bike while it was still wet um, made that so much easier than letting that sealant dry and then trying to deal with it later. And all I really had to do is take a hose to it and kind of wipe it down and swipe it down and put a little, little um, uh, soap on it and off we go. So what kind of things, that's, that's actually, we're not talking about before or after now, we're actually talking about when you're I'm gonna, on. I'm going to close the show notes so I'm surprised. Okay. What should you carry on your bike and how does that vary depending upon the distance, the terrain, the group you're with, la da 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 yada. Mm. What are the base things that you absolutely positively should have with you? All right, so on my rodeo, because that's my most prepared bike. I always have my half pack frame pack from Nittany. Mm-hmm. And in that, at all times, in the little side panels, I have an extra set of cleats with hardware. Whole cleats? Cleats, uh, the cleat washers for the SPDs, and the bolts. And I tape them up separately. Okay. So they're not jingling around. Okay. So I use electrical tape, which gives me electrical tape. Having bolts, I know that I've seen that yeah. problem. Um, so that sits in there, uh, $30 in cash sits in there. Um, Ooh. uh, extra axis battery is in there. Um, <laughs> toilet paper is in there and a little <laughs> Ziploc. Do you like, use a dude wipes or you actually use toilet paper? I just use Old school downy paper. double. I carry double the, dude, the dude wipes, dude wipes. Um, that sits in that. And on the top of the inside of that sits a mini frame, a mini hand pump that's CO2 and... Mm. I've had that from Specialized for like 10 years. Um, no one did it for a while. Then Lazine came out and Crank Brothers recently. And then I carry the Cannondale versions. But that's lived up in the little in the little loops for the frame pump. Yep. Um, in the rear of that in my Nittany tool roll, I keep my Dyna plug. I keep a Wolf Tooth Masterlink pliers, which is a tire lever. And I keep two Eagle because we and Jess run 12 speed. Well, one eagle and one flat top. Um, quick, quick link. Master link. Yeah. Um, and then, which also has a chain ring bolt. And it's the ty- you know, it's the multi-tool. Uh-huh. And then I keep my Crank Brothers, whatever, 19, which has a chain tool. Mm-hmm. Um, which spoke wrenches has on spoke that wrenches too. on that one and every other bell and whistle. Um, even has extra bacon in there, even though I use a Dyna plug. And then I carry two CO2s. I carry a derailleur hanger for the bike that I'm on. Um, is this every ride or is this just long? Like, long? No, it's every ride. Every ride. Okay. It's in my little blue. Got it. Um, and then at, inside, there's a little thing for a tubeless valve. So I keep an extra tubeless valve in there too. Okay. You don't even know it's there. And I think that's it. All right. Do you and then carry I keep a, a tube. Do you, do you carry any sealant? I started to carry sealant. No. Ever since I had that, that well, problem. You have a lot of problems. <laughs> I do have a lot of problems. I think if I were to do a long ride, like I probably should have taken a little bottle the other day, but yeah. uh, my bikes were all mixed up. I'm, I'm, I've am i started carrying one because we had that thing the other day where I got that, that nail that went in the tread and out the sidewall. And, you know, that would actually, it sealed once I got to the shop. If I yeah. hadn't been near the shop, I would have been in trouble because you just drop some sealant in it, refresh the sealant and spun it and it, the Dyna plugs held. So yeah. I, I think that that's something, although the only little bottles of sealant that I have are stands. So it's emergency use only <laughs> emerge. I'm going to actually put a label on that emergency use only <laughs> must remove, <laughs> must remove, must, must take back out, must make go away. Um, um, so that that's it. How many Dyna plugs do you carry? I have a mini pill, so I have like five, five. Okay. All right, um, nice. I don't have a racer. I got the mini pearl pill with I a little the uh, racer. Then I, I have that that little tool that's got the extra Dyna plug in it. 
So I actually think I have five. And then usually when I buy the refills, if there's one or two left over in the little plastic clip, I'll actually put the little case, squeeze it back together and put that like in a little pocket in the bag. So I've always got some more. You need a little dime bag. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what you, you do. You put it in your little bag. Absolutely. That's absolutely um, what you need. Now, does any of that vary? So you carry that regardless of distance, terrain. So that's on my rodeo, on my, <laughs> on my hey hey. I'm a little bit more simplified because um, I usually use a hip pack, also Nittany okay. Mountain Works, <laughs> and I keep a couple little ditty bags, and I keep almost the same stuff except for mountain bike cleats or cleats because I ride flats. Okay. Um, Dyna plugs always quickly accessible. I don't carry a spare tube on the mountain bike. I'm very less likely. I mean, knock on wood, again a flat where I ride. Um, it's funny, I carry a tube on my mountain bike, but I don't carry one. No. But I guess again, that goes to well. Back I to, made uh, sure everyone had tubes with the four of us, me, Jess, and the Toblers, because of it being wet out the other day. I thought we'd have a lot more flats, but well, we I I just, you had I all just, three of them. I took them all up. Yeah. I took them all for the team. <laughs> I was happy uh, to do it. Jess kept going asking me, "He's like, are you okay?" And I'm like, "Yeah, sure, fine. This is why you have all this stuff that you're prepared for. You know, you just." Yeah. So you had to stop for a couple of minutes and and stick a t- Dyna plug in it. The hey hey, I oh I always keep a spare inhaler. <laughs> oh, smart on both bikes in my hip pack. I didn't even think about that. Um, at least for me, not everyone uh, has asthma. Um, yeah. So the hey hey is pretty close, but I don't take a tube. All a right. little lightweight because I'll put my phone and stuff in the hip pack. And do you think it's a good idea? And I've been I've been toying with this. I'm actually thinking about setting up a second. Because right now I've got my Nittany roll thing, the Nittany, what's it called? The pur- burrito thing? What's it called? Pierogi bag? Pierogi bag. I can't yeah. remember. The pierogi bag. And I take that and I transfer it from bike to bike. But I've been, it's been driving. It's, it's such a pain. So I've been thinking I move about, some stuff. Yeah, I've been thinking opinion. about like just setting up a, a, a bag on my bike. Yeah, I know. That's why. Like you're going to spend over $100. Yeah. A good flat kit. Yeah. Yeah. It's, that's really what it comes down to. And then an extra $30 I always keep on my road and gravel mm-hmm. bike. Yeah, never know when you need cash. You never know when you're going to need cash. You know, because mom and pops, their credit card machine may be down. You need your potatoes, you need potatoes and yes. fireball. Yeah. Okay, so what are some very beginner level tasks that any cyclist should be able to perform or should be motivated to learn to <laughs> perform, whether or not they've they've done it or you say, oh, you know, I really always thought I need to know how to do X, Y, or Z. Yeah, you're right. You should know how to do X, Y, or Z. Um, so when someone buys a bike from the shop, we educate everyone unless they're like they don't want to. Um, we get a lot of new riders. Uh, first thing is how to pump up your tires. Mm-hmm. How to put air in the tires. Knowing which valves you have. And then make sure they, if they have a compressor only, then they get the adapters if it's Presta and blah, blah, blah. Um, we make sure they know how to take off at least the front wheel Okay. before they leave. Um, in case they got to transport it or do anything. And then, uh, it, we'd have to, we don't do the rear right off the bat unless they really want to. Well, we do flat repair classes on Tuesday nights. Um, so those two things, I tell everyone as long as they know how to pump up the tires and keep the chain lubed. Yeah. So exactly about lubricant. That's the biggest chain. thing. So then we go over chain lubrication and that's, you know, that's what we try to go through with everyone. If someone wants to do a little bit more on like how to, tweak something on their stem for bars or seat. Yeah, we'll do that. But now do you, do you recommend that they know how to clean the chain and then lubricate the chain or is it just make sure you continue to throw stuff on there? We, I mean, they keep it basic. We tell them that, you know, that there's a factory coating on it that if you put anything on it now, it'll just bead right off. It'll mm-hmm. beat up. Um, and then, you know, after about like a dozen rides, you'll see it kind of getting a little gunky mm-hmm. and if it gets a little noisy, you can put a little chain lube. But we show them how to put a little on how to take a rag, get some excess off and, you know, well, we'll show them the chain cleaning tools and stuff. Like we try not to overwhelm them. Okay. Um, you know, there's like the little pig pen thing from Pedro's or, um, you know, the little chain cleaners. Okay. So, 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 so what we off, sorry. No, I was going to say, how important is it to clean your bike? Well, don't look I mean, at my mountain bike. I mean, I mean obvi- <laughs> obviously, I think it is important. But, yeah. but from a perspective of somebody who's out there going, oh, I never clean my bike. Why is it important to do that? Um, so what we, well, I was going to say the last little bit on the other details is we have um, open hours, or we have hours on Tuesday evenings for like more in-depth 
Mm. Like if you want to really cl- learn how to clean and do stuff, your chain. Um, the biggest thing of keeping it clean is your chain, your drivetrain is going to last longer if you keep it clean. Mm. Um, well, you pay a lot of money. You want your bike to look good, but keep stuff from building up. You can inspect your bike, see if something's broken. Crud and corrosion. Yeah. And all those things uh, go hand in hand. Just keeping an eye on everything. Because mm-hmm. if you keep that consistent and you know what to look for and then something looks off one time, you know, you, your frame is cracked or you, you're missing a bolt or something, then you know. That's, that's one consistency. That, that's one of the things that's checking for loose bolts is something that you really yeah. should routinely kind of get into the habit of. I do a bounce at. test. Like for every bike that I touch at the shop, whether it's yeah. built, service. Pick it up and drop it. Just pick it up a couple inches. Usually the little valve. I usually uh, get up in the back of the truck, drop it about four a feet. A couple feet, yeah. yeah. <laughs> From there, you can tell if the... Usually it's like the press the valve lock nuts. Uh-huh. Those drive me nuts when they're loose. Water water um, bottle cage. Yeah. So um, that's, a, that's a beginner um, uh, bike tour leader. So when you're at, when you're on a tour, and you always go around... Like a magician? No, no yeah. You, you go out and you loosen. Like whoever you think is like a big tipper, you go and loosen all their water cotton. Oh, they're water cage bolts, and then they're like, "Oh, my bike rattle!" And you go, "Oh, let me look at it." And That's then why I put it. stuff in your bike and make it rattle, and then yeah, <laughs> ball bearings in the handlebar. Yeah. But you don't know, I don't bother me because I can't hear them. <laughs> um, so one of the things I've been doing, and 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 this is my headset too. This is headset, yeah, headset. Check. Grab the brakes, front brake, yeah. rocket, turn it sideways. Okay, ninety degrees because your your um your pads have a little play. Ah, if you go forward and aft with. With disc brakes, your uh-huh. pads are going to give you a little clicky noise. Uh-huh. If you turn your handlebar 90 degrees. Sideways, grab that front brake and then yeah, rock and then you'll a little know. bit. And then you'll be able to tell if your headset's pro tip. Nice. Nice. See, there's a great pro tip. Um, I've always used Dawn dishwashing detergent for my bikes because I think it's gentle. If it can mm-hmm. clean a baby duck, then it can certainly clean my bike. Well, all the pro mechanics use it. So, do they really? I didn't yeah. know that. Okay. Well, there we go. Um, and I've always used like rubbing alcohol for the sealant, right? Rubbing alcohol in a microfiber cloth. So did you know that there's a product out now called Dawn Power Wash? Have you seen that? It's actually like the dishes. It's you spray it's, it. Yeah. It's like, it's like got a pump spray pump thing. Like muck off. It's actually got, um, rubbing alcohol mm. and Dawn <laughs> detergent and water and you spray it when you pump it and spray it, it sprays foam. So it's not shooting liquid. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a bad night. So anyway, I have started to use that. In fact, we make our own at home now. We you keep the bottle and you just put a little Dawn detergent, some water, and some rubbing alcohol in. And then I will take the bike and I'll hose it down. And then I'll take that thing and I'll just go all over the whole bike and just spray foam all over it. And it's got um rubbing alcohol and the Dawn detergent in it. And then it's on a wet bike. So then I take the, mm-hmm. the wash it all down and hose it all off. It's super quick. Super convenient and super easy to do. Pro tip for me. You like that? You like that? I was gonna. One of the things I want to ask you is okay. Is that rubbing alcohol and 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 soap product? That's something you can routinely use yeah. on your bike. Okay. You saw how I wash my bike. Yeah. Yeah. Brushes, yeah. Dawn hot soap yeah. hose. Yeah, I was just. I was Be careful worried. with where you're blasting it with the hose. You're okay. Yeah, I don't typically put the hose on to like like a stream i'll put oh, it do. on a mist no, i put it on the mist to kind of like run everything off and i'll, I'll usually spray it and oh. and and rub it down a couple of times and then a little bit of wax what kind of wax product do you recommend Bees. if you beeswax are you talking about wax in your chain no 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 for like the frame if you wanted to like polish it up oh. or kind of make it shine or give it that little extra something something um we call it the church of lust Okay. Pedro's bike lust. Pedro's bike lust is what we do with a lot of our frames. Um, a little bit of bike lust. You 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 clean your bike and then at the end you put some of that on. You kind of like wipe it on, let it sit for ten minutes, and then buff it out. Mm-hmm. And it's so a lot again, easier than like a wax. Invest in microfiber. Yeah, yeah, that's the um, new. We buy like sixty multiple sixty packs a lot. I use the microfibers now in cleaning for the Airbnb because otherwise, that's nice. It goes. To, you you would go through so many paper towels. I keep I, one in the uh, car for my keep them all over screen place. and stuff. Absolutely. Um, okay, so those are those are good beginner don't wax. Don't spray any of that stuff on your rotors and all. Don't put anything like no, like when I wash on your rotors. Even when I wash my bike with Dawn and stuff, mm-hmm. um, I do not scrub my rotors. Okay, good tip. Um, and I'll take rubbing alcohol to them after. I'll scrub the crap out of my wheels. I take my wheels out of my frame. Yeah, 
Yeah, I do too. Um, but I used to wash bikes professionally. That's what professional bike mechanics, race mechanics were. So pro bike washers. So don't go crazy about not getting the the dawn and the soapy stuff on the rotors. I avoid the rotors and stuff. Try to avoid that, and then when you're done, go back with rubbing alcohol and yeah, and just kind of wipe them down I inside mean, and out. Right? I don't think it does as much as we thought it used to because we used to think that it would cause the rotors to howl a little bit. Mm. Um, so we used to take uh, like you know like grocery store bags and put those around the rotors and then rubber bands mm. and wash everything. Well, I mean, if you're taking your wheels off the frame, this is when we were washing like 15 or 20 cyclocross bikes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Like really scrub them, not like pit. Yeah. You know, in between in the pits, it was like fully washing them. So if you're if you're doing your own and you're taking your wheels off, it should be pretty easy to yeah. not scrub those rotors with soapy water. You'd be surprised. People have forgotten their kayaks for kayak battles. <laughs> So She's not a listener. Okay, so those are those are basic things. There's you, other. You treatments. really, you really should know. Yeah, you should know. You should know. So what are the that mid tier like? Boy, it would be kind of cool to know this, and maybe it saves me a little bit of maintenance money. Um, and I'm going to throw out some ideas here, and you tell me whether or not me. it's something. So what can you do with the bottom bracket? Is is the bottom? Don't touch it. Okay, that's what I was going to ask. That's not a mid tier thing. That's not a mid tier. No, nope. breaking down your bottom bracket. Unless you're very confident. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you know maybe more people are intimidated to work on their bikes like that than their cars. Yeah, I makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what about not wheel building? Nope. Don't do that either. But not wheel build. Now I'm not talking about wheel. That's an. That's I've already got that listed under advanced. But if you get your wheel a little bit out of true, should you know? Or should you know how to like no. pull that thing back into true? I don't think your typical person is going to know. No, no. Now, I'm not saying that they, they do know. Is it something that would be like a learnable skill that somebody who's not a mechanic could like, okay, well, I can, I can, I can know the basics of this. Because if you're out on the road and the wheel goes way out of true, which it's not as an important thing mm-hmm. now with, with disc brakes, I know, as back well, If your mountain bike wheel brakes. blows up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Nipple. <laughs> you got to worry about it. Um, I don't know. I'd put that more in advance. Okay. What about tubeless setup? That should be if you're riding tubeless, you should that should be almost in between basic. Changing your tires should be a basic thing. Okay. Putting a tube in there. Okay. Just above that, if you are running tubeless, you should have an understanding of how that works, and you should be able to do the setup. You should have an idea of the setup. Okay. Some combos need air compressors. Some don't. Okay. Some are easy. Some are hard they've gotten way better than they were like even five years ago well there's lots of different ways to skin that cat now um, I, I still use the not the air can i forget what they call the air shot i just use my well yeah we have a shop so air shot does such a great job um but that's a whole process within itself okay the only reason i think there's some people you know there's people that could pick it up pretty easily i'm not mm-hmm. saying that but spokes are spokes are intimidating with the wheels sure everything's reverse thread the way you're looking mm-hmm. at it it doesn't take much at all to make it worse. Okay. Like you'll make it worse quicker than you make it better. Okay. And all if right. you've done that, you're probably not going to make it better. Okay. Easy. So. I mean, it gets really out of true. Hit it with a rock. <laughs> you, you can hit it with a, yeah, your head. Hit it with your helmet. But, I mean. Only if you've got MIPS though. I, yeah. Or NIPS. NIPS. Coming out with my NIPS stickers. Um, ideally, you know, a truing stand helps. I've I've used the zip tie and the frame trick a lot, mm. um, but you know that's a whole different ball game. Yeah. So what you're talking about is where you you attach the zip tie to the frame, and then you can kind of use that. Yeah. You cut it. It's and easy. Use it as a little a little feeler for when it's. it's a- There's like I I would say like a mid level thing can be like barrel adjusters, dr- quick trailer adjustments. Okay. How to tweak your brakes slightly, like realign your calipers. What about measuring your own cassette and chain wear? And well, that's easy. Yeah, I know, I know, but I mean, it's a lot of people they don't because that's the old thing. It's like, oh, every time I go into the bike shop, it tells me I need a new chain. I'll sell people because you usually do. (laughs) I'll sell people a little like ten dollar park tool. It doesn't work on twelve speed stuff, but you know, for the hybrid cruiser, some of the entry level mountain bikes, Mm -hmm. it's ten dollars. Yeah. So, so knowing how to kind of look at your own. Not chain. all chain checkers are created equal, people. Right. Um, right. There's new chains. There's like the new Pedro's one works. Park has one that works for 12 speed that doesn't work well for the other speeds and vice versa. What about, we'd already mentioned checking the headset. What about when you determine that something is wrong with the headset? I think once you get past barrel adjusters, slight derail adjustments, then you're like, you're into advanced. What about cables? 
like brake cables and the ability to replace your own cables and people still run brake cables. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, they are. I think for rim brakes, it's pre- that's something that's fun and easy mm. and it's not catastrophic if you screw it up. Like, so if you don't have brakes, it's not catastrophic. It is. No, I mean, I think a traditional hard, road bike or, or hybrid off. or something. Yeah. But when there's hydraulic involved. Okay. That was the next thing. And even, I mean, I look at it like it's easy. But even the typical um, mechanical caliper, Mm -hmm. it's very intimidating for a lot of people to get that to not rub. It's hard to get it balanced. You can you can you can have it feel like I've I know a lot of people will set theirs up, and there's actually a way to set it up, not rub, and feel okay. But the way the caliper is offset, you'll have no brake power. Like you can mm. squeeze that and just pedal right through it. One of my very first mountain bikes, I don't know if you remember these. Um, it was um, back in the late 80s, the Diamondbacks had the, the cantilever brake underneath the chain stay. Oh, yeah, the old the, stump jumper had it too. Yeah, they were horrible. Yeah. Hard. What a worse place. Was there a worse place in the world to put a brake on a mountain bike? It's called the time trial, period, or the right TT there. bikes. Yeah, <laughs> still do it. It's dumb. Um, so obviously, hydraulic brake bleeding and things like that that's something you're probably going to want to leave to the pros no it's funny i think hydraulic bleeding is easier than a lot of the, the dude really? your bottom bracket or the other stuff okay it's not hard at the end of the day mm-hmm. if you learn how to take all your stuff out so you don't contaminate anything mm-hmm. then you're just pushing air and fluid through the line to a reservoir up top so you're saying that that's maybe something that's intimidating but at the same time it's possible i think if to... you're tech savvy uh-huh it's easier to bleed a brake than okay. do a press fit bottom bracket. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, same with suspension. If you're tech savvy and you like to tinker in the winter, like doing a lower surface on your fork, mm. it's kind of fun. So that was the thing I had. You're, you're crossing the line. I've had this, oh, this laundry I? list of the mid to the things that you should lead to the pro. And your suspension, especially on a mountain bike, is something that I said. Okay. No, the there's two levels of that, though. Okay. Okay. There's like lower surface and air can for forks and shocks. That I think with a little bit of experience, you could figure out pretty easily. Okay. Um, but when you want to go into a damper service, you know, and really pull apart the shock and the fork, that is like, there's special tools needed for that. Okay. There's order of operations, there's procedures. There's a lot of people saying they think they can right now listening to us, and they probably can't do it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, that is a whole different ball game. Okay. Gotcha. I th- and I think... I don't know the way I look at it. There's a lot of people that think a lot of the stuff's easy, but you might be working on your own bike in your garage. Mm-hmm. But when you have 120 bikes in queue and trying to do everything perfectly and yeah. like, doing it at a shop level is totally different. Different thing. Yeah. yeah. There's different a whole different animals. ball game. Different animals. Yeah. Because, yeah. Yeah. You see a little bit of everything. But no, suspension, I don't even do damper. Um, and some of the super internals right now because we lost a lot of our tooling. I never have gotten to replace it okay. at the shop, but I have one of the best Fire. suspension service shops in the country like an hour away. So why? why? So I sent it up to Mike. Yeah. Mike's a wizard. You're a wizard, and, Michael. And he stocks every small part. Like He can do about anything in a day, less than a day, nice. a couple hours. Wow. You know, he's got a hundred grand in parts and well, tools. It's just like with everything. It's yeah. like when you do, when you specialize and you do something, you do it well. Everybody else thinks it's, you know. It is like you're like a whole different level of a mechanic that is a, that's doing 100% suspension all day. So I've got, I got two more things to touch on. Electronic shifting systems. Oh, that's easy. Okay. So that's, that's something that you should, if you're running electronic shifting, you should probably. You'll have the basic understanding. A little bit about it. Okay. Yeah. Um, What about, I think my frame is damaged. Is there anything that I should do at home, or should I just say, you no. know what? I'm wondering if this bike is sound. I went down. I should bring it to somebody and have them look at it. I mean, you should never try to just guess on carbon. Okay, good. Carbon's carbon's actually pretty easy. It's either catastrophic, and you can tell, mm-hmm. or if it's kind of, you might think you have a crack. You know, there's a sound test you could do with a quarter or an Allen key. Mm-hmm. Usually, carbon has a nice ping, but you get to around a place where it might be cracked. It'll go from a nice ding to a dud really quickly. Mm-hmm. And it, you can tell. Yeah, but you know, if you're compromised, not compromised, there's. If, if, but if if I just have a carbon bike, yeah, and I've never actually done that before, how in the world am I supposed to know what it truly sounds like? So a professional, I think, that kind I of think most people are going to either a go to a bike shop or b mm-hmm. contact a manufacturer really quickly. All right, that's what I would do. 
Roger. Okay. The only real way to tell if something's fully cracked is to x-ray. You know, like if it's mm-hmm. questionable. Yeah, heard that, yeah. You got to x-ray it. Now, um, but there's so many more carbon repair shops nowadays. It doesn't mean your bike's toast. Mm, okay. Like they're everywhere and they're good. So, so getting carbon repaired is an option today. Yeah. Okay. Well, you just ride I steel. I wasn't sure. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> ride steel and give up on worrying about how light the bike is. Um, do it. Just ride your bike. Yeah, there's some it. light steel. I know. I want a mosaic steel bike. I, I love my Otto. I don't think it's, it's overweight. I well, think that's it's, titanium. It's, I know. It's titanium steel. Yeah. So is there anything that we have not talked about from a maintenance perspective that as a professional shop manager, professional mechanic, the resume that you have that we have not touched on that we should anything else out there? Oh, there's tons of stuff, stuff but we only have an hour. I mean, I mean, from a, from a, from a beginner mid tier kind of like, you know, it would drive you crazy when, you know, people bring in this and it's like, oh, well, you should probably been able to. Well, I understand how people hit certain things until I ride with you. I'm like, how'd you get that flat? <laughs> And like, how did you hit that in the real? Like, there's a chunk of metal that flew up. I can't up. see a fireball bottle literally yeah. in front of my bike. <laughs> so, you know, that, that answers some of my questions. Um, I don't know. I see a lot of weird stuff, so it's kind of hard to say. Um, I think a lot of people need to pay attention to their tires a little bit more. Mm. You know, when there's so many cuts and nicks. Yeah. You're like, oh, I keep getting flats. I'm like, well, there you go. Yeah. Um, a lot of people blow their chains up. And the fact that, like, your $20 chain now is a chain cassette, mm. maybe chain rings, jockey wheels. We've talked about this before. You yeah. you should be able to get, like, three or four chain changes out, out of, of a cassette. cassette. Yeah. But if you let that chain go too long, they mesh together. And then you got to replace the cassette, replace too. The and okay. Too far is... Um, so paying a little more attention to that. Yeah, you could rotate things. Yeah. Like, when you used to wax chains, um, it, was, it was a lot easier to rotate stuff, but... I don't know. There's a lot out there. Yeah, yeah. I was just, I was just wondering if there's something that's like, oh, I can't wait till we talk about this or that. I can't check wait your to handle bar tape. We've talked yeah, about that before. We've talked about that before, but this is in the midst of a of a conversation that's focused on that. So, you know, if you're a yeah. sweater like me, yeah, I sweat like crazy in the summer, and the and the bars it, it goes right through. And I think it was your bars, or I think a guy named Mike Doherty I found on the back the other day, and I just took them from like a few feet up and just. Pounding them on the ground really quick, and the the drops snapped on both Snap sides. Right off. Ah, um, the that's last scary thing is, too. that's yeah. scary. Last thing, even people with uh, the new suspension gravel forks, but you should get yourself an air shock or a suspension mm-hmm. shock. Yep, because cool. they're different. They have a little it threads onto the uh, mm-hmm. the valve, but that leaks just like tires. As if a- you don't know what pressure to keep it at, you know, go ask. Get it set up for you, and then keep it in your phone notes. You know what your front mm-hmm. and rear shock should be. Now, how often? How obviously those over time. How often should you check that? Uh, I check mine every couple rides. Okay. Okay. I mean, always tweaking suspension, but got it. Uh, Is that something you get play with it a little bit? You go, oh, let's, I've got it here, and it felt this way, and then I'll ride it. A oh yeah, times like and it, then tweak it. a lot of people fun. think it's going to be set before they leave the store. You got to do like yeah, half a dozen dozen rides before you get to where you like it, and then you. Something changes, and you got to tweak it again. And and don't. I'm don't, always changing tokens around. I'm changing. I'm changing my PSI. I'm changing my rebound. And tokens. Those are the little spacers that. Yeah, that's them. a whole other conversation on okay. the ramp up of suspension. But. Yeah. It's, it's it's actually if you approach that as a part of the fun, then I think you can oh, yeah. you can embrace that. It's like I I the shop told me to set my suspension at so many PSI and that's what it's at and I'm never going to change it. That's no fun. Yeah. Change it and see what you feel like. There's a lot of people that just set it and forget it. Do you feel like it's better? George um, Foreman does that. Yeah. <laughs> um, like Specialized is pretty smart and they've done a whole suspension calculator and it's a starting point. Mm. Like it gives you a starting point and it's like... It's also your ride, how you ride. Yeah. Yeah. It's all going to um, be different. And you put in, they have it for each bike because each size rider weight whatever you know if it's a pike or a factory or a xc35 or whatever um they understand they're all different so it's not like set across the board Mm. they actually fine-tuned it per bike it's a starting point okay so well great conversation yeah this was a lot of fun i still Um, like my hey hey better than a stump jumper before we go to this or that so we would be remiss if we did not acknowledge kelly werner and Kelly, Kelly Warner and Kelly Warner and Kerry Catelli. Kelly Catelli for their their wins, the Kellys. Um, at Kerry Warner and Kelly Catelli. What did I say? The Carries. 
I don't know. No, okay. it's a, we're going to have to listen now to that I, one back. Now I, now I have no idea what I said. I said, yeah. it's Kelly Catali and Carrie Warner. Right? Yeah. Maybe I'm throwing you through the loop. I don't like, know. Maybe I don't even I don't know at this if point. If I said it wrong initially, uh, oops. <laughs> I think uh, hopefully they might be on next week with Jess. Yeah, that would be a lot of fun. I know Unbound is this week, and that's where Carrie's at. Okay. That would be cool. That would yeah. be a lot of fun. I know that it'll be hard to schedule both of them at the same time. We'll figure it out. But the conversation is out there. and it's We can open. do um, AI for it. No. Yeah. yeah. We wouldn't even have to be there. So if Kelly shows up, we have to AI Carrie and then vice versa. Yeah. Yeah. That would actually work really well. Yeah. And then we could dub in their voices and tell them what they have to say. Actually, yeah. you can feed somebody's voice pa- speech patterns into AI now and it'll actually Yeah, how do you think all the funny like Joe all the presidential Obama and Biden and Trump You and... can't trust anything anymore. Yeah. You can't trust anything. I just just don't pay any attention to anything. And Dave, um father um da- master, uh, master Father, father Dave. Master Father Dave. Yes. For his finish up there. He's like Quag on Jin. Right. That's yeah. Freaking awesome. Master Father Dave. What an awesome, awesome thing to have accomplished. Not only to win it, but just, just to finish it. Just to finish it, I think. It's oh, fantastic. yeah. Jess, was, Jess fantastic. keeps saying she wants to do it next year. I'm like, do you realize like the one, like, the one day she was talking about, I was like, do you realize that stage was 34 miles? <laughs> 34 miles on of, flat bar dirt. Of, of, of climbing, descending. Yeah. yeah. It's not just a, it's not just a 34 crossings, miles. Yeah. Pennsylvania. Man, but you could spend a whole week in the woods of central Pennsylvania. Super cool. God, that's a dream. Go. We should go just take pictures. And you get a camp. Let's do that. No, <gasps> Bruce was up there. I know, but we would just take them for ourselves. <laughs> We're media. Yeah. We could go do a movie. We take pictures of Bruce. Thing? We'll take, take a pictures. pictures of people. Oh, that's it. That's perfect. A that's movement it. with Bruce at right. TSE. Uh, okay. This or that. This or that. You ready for this or that? Yeah, I'm going to try to make my extra controversial since it's only two of us. Okay, that's fine. No, I'm just um, fix a cut tire with a $20 bill. Or continue to throw sealant at your ride buddies. Is it my cut tire and my sealant? No. It's my 20. I either I either throw my 20 in that tire or, oh, actually, that's a good way to put it. It's like you, you have to throw a 20 in your buddy's tire or you have to get continually splattered with sealant. I'll throw the 20 in because I've used a tire or a... We rode, on, we rode yesterday morning. I still have sealant on me. Yeah. I bathe your, regularly. That's why you shave your legs. I just... Oh, it's still all over me. So I would I'd put a fifty dollar bill in as opposed to get run over with sealant. So you, you're going with the money too, right? We both went with the yeah, money. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll the money. I'll in. pay someone with that money later. Uh, second, gin rummy or bingo. Which one is gin rummy? Gin rummy's like a little card game. Like oh, I get three. Of What's the difference between rummy and gin rummy? I don't know. Is it just gin that's playing it? I don't know. We just always called gin. Gin, gin rummy. I don't know. Oh my goodness, am I? Getting I loved that? rummy, but. I- Bingo is fun too. We used I to like, play bingo with the old ladies at the bingo hall in like Solomon's. Bingo, I like me West and Russ. You can win money playing bingo too, yeah. and you win the old right. women. Now. They love a bunch of young men in flannels. <laughs> we used to go play bingo one night. What's bingo? They love young men, Brian. Oh, doggone it! Yeah. <laughs> I tried it I'm probably too old for that now too. We were in our early twenties. <laughs> we were cute then. <laughs> okay, um, I saw Russ the other day. I told you that. Yeah. Like, um, flat pedals with clip-in shoes, or Clip in pedals with flat shoes. Um, I would probably. Well, my my mountain bike shoes would be okay on my flat pedals. Well, aren't your mountain bike shoes like you ride flats? No, but I mean like my my recons, my S works recons. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's enough knobs there to ride my flat pedals. Well, okay, let's, let's do this. Let's say, but let's man, say- does it? It's a pain in the butt. Like when I rode those Crocs that night on the CNL, uh-huh. because it hurts the ball of your foot oh, that you're yeah. pressing on. Oh yeah, so I'm gonna go clipless shoes on flat pedals. Clipless shoes on flat pedals. Yeah, flat okay. pedals in like my P and W is not plasticky. Oh, I was gonna say, well, if we made that SPDSL, so now you got a big hunk of plastic on the bottom of your shoe. <laughs> that makes that a whole other no. thing. <laughs> I'm riding my my recon. <laughs> I would I would definitely I would think the same for me. I think that just makes sense. Um, last item, three musketeers or Snickers? Three musketeers. Yeah, all day. 100%. All day. Do you ever freeze them? Throw them in the freezer? Throw them in the pool. Ooh, that's what you do with the Snickers. But you know, I think a Snickers is more substantial on a ride. Because it, it's just... I like the peanut... Like, there's a... The internals are... I don't actually know what's like actually in a three musketeers, whatever that sugar. chalky... Uh, nougat. It's the, nougat. The, the creamy peanut butteriness <laughs> of a... 
Is that Milky Way, did you say, or Snickers? No, Snickers. Snickers. Yeah, they're all the same to me. Snickers and Milky Way, I think, are the same thing. Yeah. A lot of people will probably disagree, but they're kind of the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, they're kind of the same thing. Um, but yeah, the Three Musketeers was always my go-to. Always my and you That's ever, what I eat first. You know, and then you eat the chocolate off the outside of it. Oh, yeah. And leave just the little nougat on the inside. Mm-hmm. I just like the word nougat, too. I don't oh, know. Jesus. <laughs> I don't know what it is. <laughs> all right. You ready to shut this thing down? Yep. Let's do it. Thanks, everybody, for listening to this episode of Mid Atlantic Gravel Travel and Dirt. Send Jess a message on Instagram. Let her know you missed her this week. She'll be back here soon. She's got school. All her stickers work. are here. She's got all of her school our work that's wrapping up. Our friend uh, Ted made her stickers. Did he really? Oh, nice. For $5, you get a high friend sticker from. It's just a. Oh. Yeah. I, do I get one? You got $5? Oh, balls. <laughs> I don't know where they are right now. If you've enjoyed the podcast, maybe consider joining our Patreon family. We really do appreciate all the support. And your monthly donation of a couple of bucks really helps us keep things going. Joey, how can folks get in touch with us? We are putting kids through school with that. Oh, yeah, we are. Um, we're at GravelTravelDirt.com, and our Instagram is at MidAtlanticGTD. Mid Atlantic Gravel Travel and Dirt is recorded this week from right here in Blake's kitchen, who's become such a good boy now. He is literally the, him. the best boy. You are such the best. Jess is boy. upstairs. <laughs> That's probably what it is. Thanks for riding along. Till next time, do good, be nice, go slow, and respect others. Love you, bye. Love you, bye. <laughs>